Hey there, music makers. I'm Hayes Griffin. I'm Magnus Sedlund. And welcome to Mandolin Secrets Live, a bi-weekly show where we take a deeper look at what's happening in the world of Mandolin Secrets. Each episode, we'll tackle our question of the week, unpack the latest Mandolin Secrets lessons, and answer your questions about mandolin, guitar, and all things music. In uh, this week's episode, we'll be discussing our question of the week. Do you play other mandolin family instruments? Uh, what motivates you to keep practicing the mandolin? And we're also going to be talking about Magnus's new chord lesson for the song Tremology and how to use the cross-picking technique for accompaniment. But before we go ahead and dive into this week's discussion, be sure to head to mandolinsecrets.com forward slash live to sign up for reminders about our upcoming streams. And if you can't tune in live, never fear. Just search Mandolin Secrets Live on your favorite podcast platforms and subscribe to get updates when we release a new episode. All right, but the first thing I actually want to go into today, I want to ask everyone that is watching this live, here's the question. Do you use an armrest for your mandolin? You know, armrest is the thing that you put, well, on the on the, the body, and it's actually made for, for like releasing a little bit of the tension that, that you get from playing. So let us know if a yes or no, if you use an armrest. And I say like this, this is something that I picked up actually in the community of Mandolin Secrets. I remember Ian and Raphael and some other people were like really discussing this. And that made me actually, Ian is here, I can see, and he is of course using the armrest. That made me uh, order this one. It's called Dr. Arm. It says first aid kit for mandolinists. What do you say about that, Hayes? <laughs> I, I kind of like that, man. You know, that's a that is a tall order. Uh, that's a I was gonna say that's a that's a big promise, right? You know, but I, I kind of like where it's headed. <laughs> yeah, and I I mean, I mean, for me, I don't have any ache or something from from playing it. So th to be very honest, I ordered this uh, a year ago, but I haven't put it to my mandolin because there wasn't like nothing was stressing me to do it really. But now, now that I have a chance to try it, I must say I'm hooked. It's really, really nice thing. Just like the the touch of your arm resting to the mandolin. It's because it's smoother and and it's so. I'm gonna get. I have three mandolins, and I well, right now it's not the, something you will like actually change from one instrument to another once you place it there i think it's it's sits pretty good there so i'm actually going to order two more of these for my oh as man well. yeah yeah you're keeping dr arm in business there <laughs> keeping Dr. <laughs> arm. yeah but it's it, it, I, I i mean it's it's really also i think it helps with the positioning of the picking hand a bit so it's really something i, I can recommend and uh, i can see also people right here are actually using it yeah i like what karen says she says that she doesn't use one she just gets dents in her arm <laughs> like mm. a little uh yeah I, I, that's exactly how i feel after i i play these mandolins because right it, there's like a hard sharp edge on yeah. the mandolin so it yeah. just creates like a valley in your arm you know yeah yeah i i also i know exactly what that is about and uh, but this this thing, uh, well, I, I wouldn't. I'm not sure if it's first aid kit. That's very brave <laughs> uh, way of putting it. But I, I'm pretty sure. I think it actually makes it more comfortable playing the mandolin. And why not feeling comfy? I, I mean. Yeah, I, I've always enjoyed, I will say on the mandolins that I've played that had an armrest, I prefer it over the ones that don't. You know, mm, yeah, um, it definitely feels better to my arm. And I think like you said, too, like I notice when I don't have an armrest, there's more of an angle in, yeah. in my wrist. You know mm, what I mean? So like mm. the armrest kind of pushes my forearm out and straightens the wrist out, which I exactly. think is better. Yeah. And it's it's only like out of using it for something like it's not even two weeks. I would say 10 days or something like that. I can I miss it on the mandolin that doesn't have it now. So I think that means something. <laughs> it means something. And uh well, and there is 
there's a bunch of different armrests and there's actually a long thread about this inside the academy community but um, the one that i ordered they are from they are european made in the czech republic ah. but uh, we, we will ask for a uh, sponsorship before we <laughs> talk too much about it. Yeah, I was going to say, they might need to send me a test uh, one here, you know what yeah, I mean? Just yeah. so I can see if I like the doctor arm, right? You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. For sure. But hey, That's you. Awesome. Uh, what was the other questions you were up to? For uh, Yeah, so uh, the first one that we had was our, our mm-hmm. question of the week from, I think, two weeks ago. Because we've had a, you know, since we do the show every couple weeks, we get a few questions that we get to discuss. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first question was, do you play other mandolin family instruments? Mm. Um, and, and I thought that was, that actually turned out to be a really active thread on of Facebook. Course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it was really interesting to kind of see folks' responses to this one uh, specifically. I, the thing that I noticed the most when I was looking through the replies, I, I think it was about half and half in terms of people that do play other mandolin family instruments versus mm. people that don't. Um, yeah. And and of the people that did, if they played another instrument outside of the mandolin, it was usually yeah. oct- octave mandolin. Oh, you so, should. Yeah. And uh, for me, that makes total sense, actually, because I also think, for me, that is like my main choice as well. I play a lot of octa mandolin. And the the convenience of shifting between the two instruments is so it's so easy because of the exact same tuning and all that i mean the octave shift but but it's uh uh you say 50 50 do you and me actually present the statistic uh... the funny thing is yes because i yeah. don't play octave mandolin or anything that, like that yeah I, that was my I, guess. I have played octave mandolin but i don't mm. consider myself an octave mandolin player so no <laughs> And I guess, I mean, the reason for that is uh, playing as a mandolin player, playing the octave, that is like filling the role of a guitar, basically, in an ensemble situation, sort of. Exactly. And uh, as you guessed, my long history with the guitar kind of ensured that I never needed to play the octave mandolin. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and to be honest, that was also, I, I played a, a mandolin for 10 years before trying the octave and i tell you here in sweden and in the nordic countries the octave mandolin is way 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 more common than the mandolin uh, it, 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 we actually call it a mandola here but the tuning of it is an octave mandolin sort of and that is very common so most players do that and and i always got a question do you also play mandola and i was no 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 i i'm i play mandolin but but then eventually I tried it and I fell in love with it. Now, this is an interesting thing for me. And I, I feel, I apologize because I know I'm going to mispronounce his name. But is it Ale Muller? Yeah. Good yeah. pronunciation now, even. Oh, nice. I've, well, I've been listening to you. I've got a good teacher. <laughs> um, but he plays, like the instrument that he plays, you would call mm. that like the mandola, right? Or like is yeah. it the Swedish mandola or something like that? Like. I heard he, he, uh, there's uh, in Sweden we will call it the låt mandola. Uh, if you translate it, it it would be like a tune mandola. So a mandola made to play tunes, like in <laughs> in fiddle tunes. Yeah. So instead but, of like thinking of it as a rhythm instrument, it plays tunes and stuff like I that. I guess so. I guess yeah. so. But but, but every like everywhere it's translated, I I see people refer to it as the Nordic mandola. Oh, cool. Mm. That's cool. and and that is even more confusing because he, yeah, well, that, that that's a very interesting story actually. How Ole Möller, he was actually one of the people who started bringing in this instrument family into Swedish folk music, and he actually started. Playing Greek bouzouki, so then so if her Greek bouzouki, and then it kind of uh, happened to be more of an octave mandolin sort of, 
and eventually it grew into this lot mandola that he uses nowadays interesting and uh, yeah and uh, and it's a kind of similar story as the irish bazooki ha- happened to be placed in the celtic circuits and yeah because so. those instruments didn't start with the tradition of music but they've since been like incorporated into those musics is kind of what you're exactly. saying exactly right? yeah and, and well we're, we're we're getting all over it now but i mean even like talking about the irish bazooki I would consider the Ivis Bosuki inside the mandolin family, sort of. So we're yeah. not too far away. And here's the funny thing. I mean, it was the players like Donna Lanny, uh, Alec Finn, um, Andy Irvine, who, who adopted this in the late 60s, early 70s, sort of. And the funny thing, if you, if we, well, we, we all, we all seen the movie Titanic, right? And they, they, when they are at this uh, giant boat on the lower decks, where the where the poor people are, are hosted, they are they are having a party, right, with the Irish music going on. This is 1914, if I'm not wrong. And in the movie where they're playing this, you can see the Irish bouzouki, of course. And so it's could you call that an anachronism? yeah yeah so and uh, i mean that that, that is because nowadays everyone kind of associate the irish bazooki for traditional music the celtic stuff but um so it's obvious to, to have in the movie but it's actually what is it like 60 years before it actually happened <laughs> it's, that's a funny it's a funny story isn't it well, and it's it's something that nerds like us, when they watch the movie, they're like, mm, that wasn't mm, the correct time mm, period, mm. you know? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. That's great. But uh, also, um, I want to, like, can I answer the question once more? If I do, you play any other mandolin? Fam- so one more instrument that I actually do play is also the cittern. And the uh, cittern is also in the way that I kind of name this instrument, an octa mandolin would be like a four course instrument, right? The cittern is a five course. So that, that's how I... So I also play the uh, that instrument and that is also like an... also very influenced from the the Irish and the Celtic use of the instrument. Yeah, um, can you tell me how you tune that one? Since it's like five courses, right? Yeah, yeah. And the, and uh, there is actually, a, I would say, like a modern tradition of a sitter playing here in Sweden. And most players tune it into like an open tuning. And uh, it would either be, well, one way is doing like this. From the bottom, I go D, G, D, A, D. Yes. So you see, yeah, and that is very suitable for playing songs in D and G, of course. And uh, another, like, there's also a little bit longer scale Saturn that is tuned in the same intervals, but that would be C, F, C, G, C. So same intervals, but now it's made for C and F, and as soon as you play in D, G... E or A and things like that. You put a capo to it. That makes sense. Yeah, and uh, and that is, I mean, I can name ten to twenty people right now who plays that instrument. <laughs> I have not do it, but but uh, <laughs> so so the, 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 that that's the most common way of tuning the the at least the the Nordic style of sitter playing. But here's the thing: I am one of the very few people. Because of my love of the mandolin and the tuning in fifths, because my love of the octa mandolin, I tune my sitter in fifths as well. Ah. So that so makes like a it... C G D A E? Exactly. C G okay. D A E. So it's like a combination between like a mando cello with like a high E string yeah. on it or something like that. Yeah. 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 So, and that it, it has actually a very beautiful sound, the sitter that I use. And 
Um, maybe one little difference how I tune it from a uh, mandocello, if we're referring to that. I use like octave strings on both C and G. I'm not sure how common that is uh, for a mandocello, but maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that most mandocellists, at least the ones that I've played with, have the same gauge string on yeah, each like a course. unison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Instead yeah. of the octave. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad we got on that uh, tangent or mm. whatever. <laughs> mm. And it's. I mean, having like, I would say like a four course, four course instruments in fifths. It makes total sense. Five chords isn't doesn't make total sense anymore. It's a little bit like uh, there's a there's a it's a little bit more tricky and and I would say uh, there's a good reason for people to putting it into an open tuning as well. Yeah, I can already mm. see that just because mm. I know that on the few times I've played octave mandolin, like a longer scale length instrument, making chord shapes in those fifths is really difficult. So if you're adding another one, you would have to either add another finger or not play the string, you know yeah. what I mean? And yes. start compensating like yeah. that. So yeah, so um, that's cool. But it's, but I think it's very convenient uh, to kind of have the same kind of shapes and the same scale patterns and all that so um that is uh, and that's that's really why I, I encourage everyone that do play the mandolin but have not included another mandolin family instruments you should really give it a try because it's uh, you will you will see the similarities and how easy it is to make the transitions and uh, and playing the octave for example that that puts you in in a totally different position in an ensemble playing so it can really broaden the whole spectra of, of your musicianship yeah I, I love mm -hmm. i love that because for a lot of people they're not multi-instrumentalists right so it would be really hard to just pick up the guitar and learn how to fill the rhythmic role in an ensemble but with an octave mandolin like what you're yeah. saying you can just take your mandolin skills and learn to kind of exactly. fill that tonal yeah. space yeah yeah and it's um, well, to, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's that's the thing I'm talking about. And uh, well, it <laughs> might might be time to leave the subject. But may I like play a little short clip for my for my the cross picking thing that I did for my Octa Mandolin on Tremolo. I think that would be great. Yeah, that would give yeah. people an idea of what this sounds like that we've been describing mm -hmm. for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, and also I think it's... Um, I love like the sounds of these two instruments together. So and in this little short clip, we can also have a little idea of what, what that is like. So, and... Um, I'm actually doing, while well, the melody for this song, it's tremology, it's like tremolo technique for that. In the, in the chord and the rhythm playing, I'm using uh, like a cross picking thing. So let us have a short listen to that, 30 seconds or so. that and I so it, it works very good for like both strumming kind of rhythm playing but also this cross picking technique and for me why I choose the cross picking for this one I think it's it's uh, yeah, it's, it gives us a nice rhythmic element to it and I would say like cross picking for me, that is, that is a little bit what like finger picking would be to a guitar, for example. Yeah, it's the same kind of effect, only instead of using three fingers, you're using your pick to kind of jump the strings, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's a very like very good technique to to implement 
on, on the cro on the octa mandolin as well, not only into mandolin playing. Yeah, and, and if and if anyone's listening out there and you're you know interested more in what cross picking is, Magnus and I have a few lessons up on our YouTube channel, so you can just you know Google or excuse me, search in in YouTube mandolin secrets and cross picking, and that'll come up. Um, yeah, for kind of a more in depth look. Mm hmm. Cool. And actually, talking about that, we even have a like a cross picking webinar coming up on June twelfth. We're going to do the cross picking webinar. So if someone want to be part of that, uh, there's not no chance to like re get registered for it right now. But we'll if you stay in the loop, we will let you know once it's open for registration. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And then the, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've been talking about for 50 minutes about this thing, but I'm actually even more interested in this other thing. The question that you put there, like, what motivates you to practice the mandolin? Was it that? Yeah, mm. that was a really great question. I, there were, uh, I'm looking on our thread on Facebook right now, and there were 90 mm. replies to this one. Everybody had wow. an opinion on this one. Yeah. Um, trends that I noticed, I would say, you know, this is a rough percentage, like not scientific at all, but but about half of the people on there it seemed mm. like about half of the people. Um, the social aspect of playing music was what mm. motivates them to play. So whether it was like, I have a group of people that I jam with regularly, or I have yeah. a band that I play with, that's what keeps them motivated. Mm. Um, but there was another really interesting response too, where people were kind of talking about um, more like what your reply was on the thread. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where it kind of playing the mandolin helps them tap into something expressive in, mm. inside of themselves that they don't really get a, a chance to to kind of activate otherwise so yeah lots of good responses there but those were definitely two of the main ones that i saw um yeah and i think i mean i can't even see this question is like tackling one of the thing that i i think because i mean both you and me are being uh, teachers trying to inspire people helping them to get better make improvements take the playing to the next level all that kind of stuff and so it's it, it's also interesting to see what is the reason for becoming better what is the like why improvement why develop sort of so I th and i think that's very interesting to actually bring the question even down to that kind of uh, like grassroot level sort of and for me i would say i can see three very very good reasons for improvement um can i share them with you <laughs> actually lost haze for a little second oh yeah, yeah i was gonna say it froze for just a sec sorry my friend <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no worry but i mean the first one is really because I think what becoming better makes it a little bit more fun, and it, it's kind of like because uh, I I'm um, very much into like jogging, to mountain biking, running, skiing, and all that. And you know the just to give you an, an picture of that, what that is like, like the first time of the season when I go out with the my buddy and we do like a 10 kilometer run for example the first time i'm doing it for the season it's like all my effort is getting me just making me finish the tour kind of <laughs> i totally know what you mean yeah it's, it's like yeah. everything is spent by the by the time you get to the end right you yes <laughs> yes but the next time i'm doing it with a little more like better prepared it's gonna be i mean I will start enjoy it even more. Maybe I will even see like the beautiful nature that I'm in. I'm gonna like, and I think it's a little bit the same with the music playing. If you go to a jam session and all your effort is like your focus is to being able to play this tune to keep up with the others and finding the notes. So if your focus is all in there, you're gonna like. You're not going to enjoy it as much as you do when you play it more effortlessly. I, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, yeah. 
And I, I think a lot of the folks that were saying on the thread that they played for social reasons would probably, mm. now that they heard your explanation, they would say that, yes, that is exactly what they're talking about, right? You know, um, because it, it just makes it, uh, I think the key word that you said there was effortless, right? Exactly. When, you're, when you're playing with other people and you, and you put the time into practice, mm. then it doesn't feel like work and you can enjoy the social aspect of it, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, so effortless is more fun. And that is like the, the second thing is, I, I would also say, uh, becoming better at playing music will make the communication a lot easier. Yeah. Just like you're saying there, I mean, you can, you, we can play the song. At the same time, we can listen to what the other people are playing. <laughs> and, and, but we have to get to a spe- like certain kind of level to actually enjoy the communication of music and, and the social part of it. And I'm not, I'm not talking about like making a share or toast with some of the people. At the, yeah, I'm talking about like musical communication now. So, the, but, but we want to get to a specific level to kind of get into that. Uh, so I, I guess that's what, what, what people are like tapping into talking about the social part of it. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that one. And I know I feel the same for myself, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because the, the way that I know that is because if I haven't practiced a lot and I get together with my friends, I find it harder, <laughs> you know what I mean, to, yeah. to communicate on that level and stuff. So yes. it, I think the, the proof is there. Yeah. And, um, and the third reason why I say like improvements is uh, so important, it's, uh, I think it might, might also... It's for the, for the actual sake of progress making. There is like a reward only in that. You know, the frustration comes to us when, when we're feeling stuck, when we feel that there is no forward moving sort of. that. that uh, so I, th- I think like improving your mandolin playing, that will spill over to other parts of your life, basically. So making us... Yeah, well, like, it's, uh, in its little small isolated thing, it's a way of self-improvement, really. And that is very beneficial, at least for me, and I think it's for most of my students that I, I, I see as well. Like, yeah, well, giving us a sense of moving forward sir and that is very important thing only like yeah Uh, agreed i I think most people most people that end up quitting music you know most people that get frustrated and Mm. and put the instrument down after a while it's because they don't feel that sense that you just described they don't Mm. feel like there has been any cumulative progress or anything like that um and it's like you said, it's all about habit building, right? Like Mm. we have to, if you can build this one habit of like just touching the mandolin for five or 10 minutes a day, Mm. then I found it so much easier because exercise was always a a hard thing for me. You know what I mean? To kind of get into the habit of doing, but I felt like I was able to do stuff like that easier once I had like a daily practice regimen you know? and when we're um, talking exercising you mean physical activity like doing yeah, the, your activity. workout sort of yeah, yeah exactly yeah but that, that, that that's that, that's a uh, living example right there what i'm talking about i think um and um so i guess in in, in the i mean for me improving my mandolin playing makes me a better person in a way <laughs> agreed i yeah. think it's like anything it, 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 it if it wasn't the mandolin it could have been anything else it could have been visual you know painting it could have been yeah dancing it could have been it's, any kind of creative outlet yes right? yeah and being also uh, being a parent i see that that is like one of the things that i really wish for my kids that they they find they can find uh, like I have found the mandolin and my passion for that that also can see they it can be anything you know 
Uh, and I, he, for my son, he's nine years old, so it's really he's going from one thing to another, like trying different things. And right now, it's karate, karate. Yeah. And just seeing his passion about that, and and like his. So, yeah, and that, that's really something I wish that at some point, or even if it cha- it can be a, ch- a thing that's changing, of course, but as long as he have something like that, that that's really, well, makes him uh, happy to get out of bed, to looking forward yeah. to the next kind of thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, put it, like you said, it's that sense of forward momentum, you know, mm. something... The mandolin, I think for you and me both, it draws us to it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like so, it's, yeah. Finding something like that is mm. uh, is very special and necessary. Very I think. Special. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah. But that that that's my. Th- I repeat them once more. What while so what motivates you in the practice room? And I like for me it it even goes down to why even imp- make improvements and effortless is more fun. Um, becoming better in- makes us increase the possibilities for communication and then the third thing is for the sake of progress making simple as that this is uh, I-, I learned something today man. <laughs> <laughs> this is cr- I'm, I should be writing this down right now <laughs> oh, that's great yeah. yes um, this was a great chat Hayes, nice talking to you yeah nice talking to you too my friend seriously i, mm. I this is this has been an inspirational call i know i was kind of joking there but that's mm. i think we're really touching on something important here that hopefully a lot of the folks you know that listen to this might might take away you know just find find something that sparks you and inspires you you know um yeah and run with it yes and um we'll be back in two weeks again the date for that would be I'm kind of I'm checking here because I'm on June second. We're gonna be back for another Mandolin Secrets live. Yeah, and that's uh. And before we get out of here, uh, before that date, uh, go ahead and check out mandolinsecrets.com forward slash live for more information on how to keep up with the show. Magnus and I, um, like I said, we're gonna keep a uh, kind of hopefully giving you some inspirational tidbits here in these talks over the next couple weeks. So if you yeah. want to make sure that you don't miss out on the next call, just like I said, mandolinsecrets.com forward slash live for more info. You can sign up there for notifications and then kind of also click around and see what else is happening at mandolinsecrets.com, you know? Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome, my friend. Well, like you said, it's been an inspirational talk, and uh, um, I'm excited to go practice now. (laughs) That sounds good. In your new home. In my new home, yes. Uh, For those of you out there listening today, the day of recording on this, I just moved back to my home region of central Ohio into Columbus. So we're really excited Uh to be back in in Ohio and plugging into the music scene and stuff around here. So yeah, I'll go... Go yeah. practice in the new in the new studio space. Fantastic! I'm really longing for the day I have a chance to visit you there. Yeah, well, uh, me too, yeah. my friend. <laughs> yes. So thank you, everyone, for I can see people have also tuned in here live. So thank you, everyone, for watching and being with us here tonight. Darren says a great topic. Thank you, and we got uh, new co- topics coming up for the next show of course and you can actually follow the the conversation and the discussion inside our facebook group yeah so and for those of you out there that's mandolin's uh mandolin secrets be a music maker so give us a give us a shout on facebook and see what we're up to yes thank you very much um if if nothing else let's finish with that right remember be a music maker.